Morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is time for our daily devotion. So we're going to join everybody uh, real quick on Facebook. Looking forward to our time that we have together. Uh, as you join, if you would like to leave a comment, let me know that you are here. would love to say good morning to you. Uh, for our devotions, we read the scripture of the day. Uh, reflect, uh, read the upper room devotion as well for today. Reflect on it and then take Come and join us if you would. Just going to wait a couple minutes for folks to sh show up. Respond to an email. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning on this lovely day. Hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you, Mr. Dunbar. Good morning to you, sir. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Just watching to see if anybody else leaves a comment. For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. So if you want to find that real quick, Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read verses 7 to 12. Matthew chapter 7. Good morning, Barbara. Glad you are with us today. I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'm sure that we'll have others who will join us here in, in midstream. But Let's go ahead and get started. So Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 12. Ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door is opened. Who among you will give your children a stone when they ask for bread? Or who will give them a snake when they ask for a fish? If you who are evil know how to do give know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Therefore you should treat people in the same way that you want people to treat you. This is the law and the prophets. Our devotion writer is Michael Moreland. He is from Alabama. Focus verse for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. In the Common English Bible, it reads, God comforts us in all our trouble so that we can comfort other people who are in every kind of trouble. And here is the devotion that Michael offers for today. Being a parent doesn't come with a job description or a manual. It is on the job training all the way. As a father, I am always learning. I am no superhero or mighty pillar of strength. I am only a parent. When my child hurts, I react. When my child cries out, I hear. When my child asks for assistance, I do what I can to help. So why don't I let my heavenly father do for me what I am more than willing to do for my children? Why do I try to do it all myself? I'm finally learning to go to my Heavenly Father when I'm frightened, lonely, bruised, or hurt. God reassures us. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I'm learning that God is waiting to give me comfort as a parent who wants the best for me, a father who will pick me up and hold me in his arms. God, our Father, won't go away, ever. So the thought is, 
God is our Heavenly Father, and God will never leave us. Now, just to move a little bit beyond that kind of parochial language, the, the patriarchal language of God as Father, um, it, 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 we want to think of God as our our um, parent, maybe a heavenly parent who loves us and provides for us in ways that we cannot provide for ourselves. It is fascinating um, watching my children raise their kids. There are many books on the market on child raising. One of them is uh, What to Expect When You Are Expecting. Another is The Wonder Weeks um, kind of book, and so it talks about you know, a child's development by weeks um, as they are aging and what some of the things that they should be experiencing during that time. With the advent of the internet and what we call blogging, you know, uh, um, there are mommy bloggers who are out there who are giving their wisdom, their advice from their experience of raising their children. It is fascinating to watch our kids because Matt and Brooke and I'm certain Jordan and Karina in many ways will do the same. They'll, they'll rely on certain resources that are contemporary to them, the people who are currently raising children versus those of us who have raised children, right? And so they'll research that and they'll look for that kind of information to be able to give them the assistance they need in raising their kids, only to discover that just because one person's child is doing X, Y, Z at this time in their development doesn't mean your child will, right? Every kid is unique. Every kid kind of learns and grows at their own kind of pace. But the beauty of it is, is you have parents that are there and, and those parents are there to protect and provide. Matt and Brooke do a wonderful job with Chloe. It is fun to watch them with her and all that they do to care for her and provide for her. The energy and the time that they give um, in interacting with her, taking her on little walks, taking her walking up and down because she's at that stage now where she wants to stand up and she's trying to learn to walk and so she can kind of walk around some of her toys and around the edge of the couch, but she still wants to hold on to your hands to walk. You know, and so all those kinds of things. Like she loves to read books, so you take her into her room, she'll just sit down and she'll just fiddle, you know, she'll flip through books for 30 or 40 minutes at a time kind of thing. So it's, it's fun watching them interact with her. They have the best in mind for her. And that's what the truth of today's devotion is as well. That God has the best in mind for each of us if we are willing to allow God into our lives in that kind of way that God wants to give us assistance in times of trouble, that God wants to be our provider in times where we are in need, that God wants to give us the love and the encouragement that we need to persevere and endure in life, that God wants to put his arms around us and protect us in the times where we are frightened, lonely, or hurting. If only we would allow our heavenly parent in our lives in that kind of way we might discover that God is ever-present, and we might discover that God is the one who will never leave us, and that we have a constant companion in our heavenly parent. And it could be something that we could also learn to share with others as well. As we find that great comfort, as we find the assistance, the guidance, all those things that we need from God, if we find those things to be prevalent in our lives and evident in the way um, we are living and who we are, then it might be a way for us to also witness to the world around us that God is a heavenly parent, not just for some, but God is the heavenly parent of all, and how we might find ourselves relying upon God in those wonderful ways. Let's take a moment to pause and to pray. So, oh God, we ask that you teach us this basic truth that we can trust in your unfailing love. Help us to see you as present in our lives, our heavenly parent. May we give you um, all the rain that you need to be able to provide for us in these meaningful ways. And we ask this in Christ. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Uh, don't forget to come join me again tomorrow for our time of daily devotion. 
We will be on at uh, 1145. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Glad that so many of you were able to make it today. Hope you enjoy a beautiful Tuesday. I think it's supposed to be in the 60s today. Yeah, kind of kind of the time of the year where the temperatures are going to go like this and I'm going to catch, you know, maybe not catch coronavirus, but might catch cold out of all of this. But uh, So keep safe, keep warm. Good to see you. Have a blessed rest of your day.